Hi guys, welcome to Commercial Law in Kenya. Uh, this legal unit uh, is divided into three key divisions, one being sale of goods, agency, and higher purchase. Now, as a student of a commercial law in Kenya, uh, please remember that if you're new to this channel, subscribe to Nairobi Legal so that you can watch the entire course. Now, with that short background, today's video will focus on sale of goods. And at this point in time, you should have downloaded the Sale of Goods Act of Kenya, Chapter 31, which is available online. Now, with that act downloaded, under Section 32, you will find a definition of a, sale, a contract for sale of goods. And this, this section provides that uh, this is a contract where the seller transfers or agrees to transfer the property in the good to the buyer for a money consideration called price. Now, what strikes out in this definition are two terms. Number one being uh, to transfer property in the good. Now, to transfer property in the good means to transfer ownership in the good. The next key thing that comes up in this definition is money. Now, as far as a contract uh, for sale of goods is concerned, money has to be in the picture. This is a key thing that you need to remember all the time. Because if you're involved in a transaction, that involves exchange of goods and money is not in the picture, then that transaction does not qualify for a contract of sale of goods within Kenya. Number two, there may be a contract of sale between one part owner and another part owner. Now at this point in time again you might wonder what does a part owner mean? I will explain the meaning of this a term using two key examples which are provided uh, below. Uh, in Kenya, we have companies, and you might know that. Uh, well, you might you might know that companies are owned by so many people, and so a shareholder of a company becomes a part owner of that company. The other example is tenants in common. Uh, tenants in common means uh, that. Let me use an example here. In Nairobi, we have so many apartments, so you can find one block of apartments has about 50 units that are owned individually by 50 different uh, people. So these are tenants in common. So each individual owner of a unit becomes a part owner of uh, that property. And that individual owner can actually sell off the interests that unit to another person who will become a part owner to that block of apartments. Now, with that in mind, I want us uh, again to go through another key concept called uh, transfer of property in the goods, which I've already uh, talked about. Now, transfer of property in the good means transfer of ownership in the good. So when I use this term in the next uh, videos, remember it means transfer of ownership in the good. Now, having known uh, the meaning of transfer of property, I want us again to differentiate between possession and ownership. Now, these two words are very different. If I have a car and give it to my friend for a week, what I've done in that case is that I've transferred possession of my car to my friend for a week. Ownership is still, I mean, ownership still belongs to me. I'm the owner of the car, but I've given out possession. Now, as a commercial law student, you might have come across a term called bailment. And under bailment, what is delivered is the possession of the good and not ownership. Same example I've given above. Uh, this happens a lot in uh, in instances where you're hiring out a car. What you give out is possession of that car and never ownership. And also when it comes to ownership, ownership in a property may pass immediately or at a future time. Meaning that uh, we have certain contracts that are called executed contracts or absolute contract where ownership passes immediately. An example here would be that if you need a laptop and walk into a shop to buy one, agree on the on the price, uh, write and execute, I mean, you come up with an executed contract, uh, you pay for the laptop and it's handed over to you, then you you are the owner of that uh, uh, laptop immediately. But there are also instances where ownership will pass at a future time. And uh, scenarios include buying land. Land is not an item that you buy overnight. It um, takes uh, certain processes uh, for that land to be transferred to you as the owner. And so if you can, of course, uh, acknowledge that in this transaction of buying and selling land, uh, you have to do a number of 
background check to, to, to ascertain whether the person selling the land is he the owner, uh, who owns the land, where is it located, um, how many previous owners of this land are there, what problems could come with this land. So this is a transaction that takes time and of course transfer of ownership occurs at a future date until when there are certain transfer instruments given to you and then you become the owner. The other example here in terms of um, a future transfer of ownership, we have a scenario where maybe person A is selling timber to person B. Remember this timber may not exist, it may be somewhere in a forest and person A will have to first visit it. So person A has uh, to first fulfill certain conditions uh, for this contract uh, again to transfer ownership to person B. So number one could be harvesting the timber and then delivering it to person B's uh, premises and then upon there they're going to of course now transfer ownership of that timber. Um, this will become clearer to you in the next few slides. Now just to emphasize where we started, when it comes to a contract for sale of goods, remember that money has to be in a picture. A butter trade does not form a contract for sale of goods. And the case in question here for a commercial law student is Aldrich versus Johnson. Uh, this case brought out one key principle. And the principle is that uh, in terms of um, consideration, uh, consideration does not have to meet the exact value of the good as long as it is sufficient for the purpose of that transaction, then that's fine. The transaction will be considered a sale of goods contract. And so if I buy a car at 10 million, um, maybe I buy a car 10 million, and then later on I sell it at 100K. Now that consideration of 100K is just sufficient for the transaction to be considered a sale of goods contract because um, there's already money in the picture and that's our contract. That's an agreement we've come up with. It doesn't matter that I've reduced the cost of the car from 10 million to 100,000. Now with that in mind, I want us to go to the critical part of this um, video, which is the distinction between a sale and an agreement to sell. Remember these two words are different. Under sell, we, what we mean here is that the property in the good passes immediately. When you go buy a phone and pay for that phone, you are the owner of that phone immediately. Property and ownership has passed to you, the risk has also passed to you, meaning that if that phone gets spoiled, then you're responsible for um, the fact that the phone is spoiled. So here property passes immediately, while on this side uh, ownership passes at a later date. Like I told you, uh, when I say property passes immediately, what I mean is that ownership passes immediately. Yeah. Under sell, property passes immediately, while under an agreement to sell, ownership uh, passes at a later date. Property and ownership will be used interchangeably because these are just legal terms. Now when it comes to another distinction is uh, in terms of these two um, terms, if a buyer defaults, the seller can sue for price. Remember under sell, um, when a buyer defaults, a seller can be able to sue for price. And the reason here is that uh, the seller has already given consideration. While on the other side, you can only sue for unliquidated damages because you actually do not know what amount of the loss the seller has suffered. Remember you're in the process of agreeing to the sale. It's an agreement to sell, so you can only sue for unliquidated damages. Yeah. The next key distinction is that under sell, um, if a seller defaults, a buyer can sue for damages um, of the goods. Meaning that um, for this first concept, um, if I bought property from you, under sell of course, I bought a laptop from you, and you don't deliver it to me within the time we agreed, uh, then I can sue you possessing that laptop, yet it belonged to me already because under sale, remember, property passes immediately. So I can sue you for not actually giving me something I already bought from you. Now, of course, as you can see, the next distinction here is that under a sale, again, ownership has passed to the buyer, uh, meaning that the buyer again bears the risk already uh, as far as the sale is concerned, while on this other side, risk remains with the seller irrespective of whether the goods are in possession of the seller or the buyer. So under an agreement uh, to sell, if you're selling a car, 
and you have an agreement to sell the risk uh, will remain with the seller because you know what ownership is going to pass at a later date ownership hasn't passed yet meaning that even if i'm under possession of your car i have no risk passing to me until the day when um, ownership will pass to me so these are the distinctions between a sell and an agreement to sell and i think even uh, focusing on the words themselves you can see an element of a difference here you already um under a sell and here you're just in the process of agreeing to a sell meaning uh, that ownership will pass at a later date with that in mind in terms of answering a question on um, sale of goods if you're given a fact best question uh, please remember to use um, FIRAC meaning that you are given facts uh, read the facts identify the key issues uh, from the fact now you can see the examples I've given on your screens after identifying the facts you need to discuss the applicable law you could say that probably in this situation the law that applies is section 15 of the sale of goods act uh, that uh, speaks to sale of goods by sample so when you apply you need to mingle the issues and the law that applies to those issues after that remember that if you're told to advise parties you have to speak to the parties you need to speak to because you're advising a party in that scenario so you need to address the problems in that scenario so that the party is able to get a solution now in terms of performing an analysis if you spot an issue you have to um, marry it with the law and an example here would be that um, maybe you're wondering what remedy is Okello entitled to then the answer should be yes uh, Okello is entitled to this and this remedy and the reasons for that remedy are this and this and after that uh, you need to remember that the extent at which you discuss a point depends on the marks allocated to you so remember identify the issues uh, get the law that is applicable to those issues and remember to speak to the parties in that situation so that they get a solution uh, that is what the examiner would wish to see in your analysis so again after the analysis remember to have a conclusion uh, remember that at this point in time you've uh, listed the issues um, the applicable law and then the question here would be that um, you need to come to a conclusion that makes logical sense and as you've seen on the slides I've written down a scenario whereby you're able to read through the question and see how you can break it down and answer now if you are of course coming to a conclusion you can you can then say a drawing from the above legal exposition probably Okello can succeed in an action for damages because of one two three four reasons so anytime you're given a question to advise parties remember to use a uh, fire rack, spot out the issue get the applicable law speak to the parties show them act like you're providing a solution through the things that you write and then draw a conclusion you can advise a partner and tell him based on this situation these are the remedies that you're likely to get or based on this uh, situation um, you might be able to win this case or you might not be to able to, to win this case because of one two three four reasons now this brings us to the end of sale of goods part one uh, when i come back we're going to be discussing about another topic under sale of goods please remember to subscribe uh, to nairobi legal uh, to watch the entire course thank you